Hey, what's up guys? Joe here with another episode of Chemical Guys Detail Garage. Today in the shop, I wanna go over clay bars. I'm gonna go over what they are, what they do, and which one is the right one for you. All right guys, so like I was saying, a clay bar is a great tool to decontaminate the surface of your paint. And what that means is, you know, when you decontaminate the surface of your paint, you're removing the stuff that's embedded in the paint, such as grime, you know, rust, industrial fallout, things that stick to the paint on a more microscopic level. So with the clay bar, what it does is it helps pull off that grime embedded contamination so it restores that glass smooth surface and clarity that's in your paint. So the first clay bar I wanna go over is our light grade clay bar. Now the light grade clay bar works out amazing for light contamination such as on a brand new car or you know on a maintained car. In this case, in this Supra here behind me, this car is garage kept. The owner does take very good care of it and he stays pretty on top of his maintenance washes and detailing. So for a car like this that gets very light contamination such as you know like a brand new car, you know your own car or a car that you just picked off the dealership, they can have light levels of contamination which you want to make sure that you can decontaminate it so that before you wax it, before you apply any kind of ceramic coatings, vinyl wraps, you want to make sure that the surface of your paint is completely smooth and rid of any kind of contaminants that are you know, bonded to the surface. So a light clay bar is gonna allow you to go ahead and lightly glide over the paint nice and smoothly without running into any kind of rough feel or contamination, which like I said, is usually meant for brand new cars or newer cars that are maintained so that you're not there all day with like a sticky clay bar, you know, pulling off heavy contamination. That's the reason why we carry a variety of clay bars. So in this sense, like I said, we'll be using the, the light clay bar so that we can gently glide over the surface nice and quickly without any kind of resistance or any kind of you know, potential for like, you know, scratching or marring the paint. All right guys, so now we're up close and personal. So now I'm gonna show you the process of what to do and how to actually use this clay bar. So the first thing you wanna do is open it up. So you can open it up from your packaging here and you'll see that once I pull it off, it's a big block of clay. It's nice, it's, you know, it's tangible, you can squish it. It's nice and smooth and soft. So what you wanna do first is, you know, believe me when I tell you this, take off these plastics. Don't be the person that doesn't take them off because these plastics can potentially mar your paint since it's not a smooth surface. You wanna make sure you take off these plastics. Don't be that person that doesn't because if you don't, you could potentially mar the paint and you might have to be able to polish it out. Next thing you want to do is you don't want to use this whole entire clay bar on your vehicle. What you want to do is you want to cut a chunk of this. So what I like to do is I like to cut it in half. And since this is a nice soft one, it's very easy to go ahead and break. I'll break it in half. I'll store this piece away. And I'll also break this piece in half because a clay bar, like I was saying, oh, that's a good amount right there. You can store this for a later date or if you need to go ahead and grab some more. But this light little piece of clay bar is gonna be enough for me to go ahead and do this vehicle because like I said, it's lightly contaminated, so this is more than enough for me to go ahead and you know get this entire vehicle done. So the next thing you wanna do is you wanna grab your clay bar and you kinda of wanna knead it out a little, kind of into a little patty, big enough so that you can kinda of grab with your forefingers here. And I'll show you that in a second. And I don't know if I mentioned this, but the reason I'm wearing gloves is because I like to stay protected just because I don't like getting any kind of chemicals on my hands. And you know, believe me, when you do this, you're gonna get chemical on your hands, which is our next point and topic, which is our clay lubricant. Clay luber is gonna allow you to go ahead and glide over your paint so that you don't risk any type of marring. It's a synthetic lubricant that's just gonna help you glide left and right, because believe it or not, you're not gonna use this dry as is because you're not gonna get far without this. So that's our specialty clay lubricant. That's what you want to go ahead and utilize as your source of synthetic lubricant for clay bar in your vehicle. So now that I've kind of morphed my clay bar into like a light little patty, like I said, I can kind of grab it with my four fingers here and it's not going to slip off my hand. So now that that's all said and done, I do want to mention that on this car, we did wipe it down prior to this video. We wiped it down with the waterless wash and just with any other clay barring in your life, you want to make sure that the surface is clean. So either wash the vehicle or you can go ahead and wipe it down with the, you know, a detail spray or a waterless wash, depending on how dirty it is. So like I said, this is the clay lubricant. What you want to go ahead and do is you want to go ahead and start off in a two by two section. So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and spray the section here and I'm going to go ahead and coat it nice and evenly. I'm not going to go ahead and just spray one light spray. I'm actually going to go ahead and do about two, maybe three, four. And I'm also going to spray my clay bar 
just to add that added lubrication. And what you want to gently do is just glide your clay bar left and right. You're going to glide it left and right. You don't want to mimic any kind of circular motions because if you pick up any kind of grime, you could potentially mimic that motion and cause a swell mark effect throughout the whole entire course of the vehicle. So simply glide it left and right. I'm not adding any pressure. I'm simply using my palm just to kind of hold this clay bar down. And I'm also going to do a cross hatch motion and go up and down. Keep in mind, we are indoors. So one quick tip that I do want to give you guys is always clay bar indoors because what I see people do is they'll do an area and they'll spray the clay lubricant throughout like half of their hood. And by the time they do one section and they want to move on to the next section, this, the heat from the sun has already dried up, you know, the clay lubricant that was on the surface and it rendered it useless. So now you have to spray more, you know, use the clay bar and you just waste the product for no reason. So don't use the clay lubricant and or the clay bar under direct sunlight if you want to go ahead and make the best use out of your products. So now I'm going to go ahead and set my clay bar down. I'll let it down on the plastic. And then, like I said, I didn't really mention this, but once your paint, you know, when you're using the clay bar on the paint and it just feels like glass and it's going left and right very smoothly, that's just an indication that you know that that area is done and that you can go ahead and, you know, stop clay boring and wipe it off with your nice microfiber towel. So in this case, I'm gonna grab my towel, wipe off the excess of the clay lubricant. And I like to flip it around just to buff off any product. And then you can feel your paint. And if your paint feels glass smooth and you don't really hear any kind of rough feel, you'll know you're done and you can move on to the next part of your vehicle. You wanna make sure that you're using clay luber because I see a lot of people out there that they'll say, oh, you know, you could just use a mixture between soap and water. Sure, soap and water may be considered a lubricant, but if you're using a strong soap, that could potentially dry out your clay bar, dry it out, make it rough, and that can be a factor for scratching your paint. So I highly don't recommend that you don't use any soap and water mixtures because like I said, you could potentially dry out that clay bar which you know you don't want to waste money on having to buy a brand new clay bar just because you ruined it by using soap and water. All right guys, so now that we finished the hood of the Supra, we're gonna move on to a different vehicle because I wanna show you guys different levels of contamination and why you would use a different grade of clay bar on a different vehicle. So like I mentioned, this car only needed a light clay bar, but there are some cases where you, know, you might need a medium and or in worst case scenario, a heavy clay bar for that rough contamination. All right, guys, so now we're outdoors because we want to go ahead and go over our next clay bar, which is our original. Now, what does original mean? Original is a blend between a light and a medium clay bar. So this works out great for maintained cars that are mainly kept outdoors, such as this forerunner here. Now, the owner of this forerunner here actually lives in an area where they also get a lot of industrial fallout. Uh, pretty much means that you get a lot of contaminants that kind of stick to the paint and when you look at it here, you may not necessarily see it, but you can definitely hear it when you go ahead and kind of rub your hand over the paint. Check this out. So you hear it, it sounds pretty rough, not super rough, but enough for us to kind of have to up our game in the clay bar. So like I said, the original is a mixture between a light and a medium. So that gives you a nice pull between a smooth clay bar and that stickiness so that you can pull off this level of contamination. So same thing. I've already pulled it out, the packaging. I got myself a little you know, piece right here. Same thing, I'm gonna go ahead and knead it around into a little patty. And you can see this one's kind of a bit stickier as compared to the first one, the light one. It's kind of sticking to my gloves here, but bear with me. Let's stretch that out nicely, get a nice even little patty here. So now that I have my clay bar kneaded to like a nice little patty, same process, I'm gonna go ahead and grab our clay lubricant and I'm gonna go ahead and saturate the area just nicely enough so that I don't get any friction. And something you might hear different with this clay bar right here, and I'll try to you know get the mic close on there, but when you start clay boring on a contaminated surface like this, it kind of sounds like you're scratching the paint because it sounds very rough here. I'm not applying any pressure. I'm doing the exact same process as I did on the Supra, left and right, in a little two by two section. And I also go up and down. And you wanna do this until, like I said, the paint feels nice and smooth, and you don't really hear like that rough, raspy feeling that you're kind of feeling when you're first doing it. 
there might be some patches in the paint where you have a little bit more concentration i still feel this area kind of rough as compared to like the surrounding area that i just finished but that's common when you're using it on these like flat panels such as like the hood the roof the trunk of your car because those are the areas that kind of get the most fallout and the most grind that settles on there so once you've done a little section i'll go ahead and wipe that off same process just wipe it right off not a complicated process you're just wiping off the excess of the product then you can feel your paint it's nice and glass smooth my fingers are still kind of stained with the product but You'll hear that there's no noises coming from the paint. It's just like glass. All right guys, so you guys saw I made a little bit of a boo-boo and I dropped the clay bar, but I actually did that on purpose because I wanna go over a specific point, which is if you drop your clay bar, do not use it. Don't go back onto your paint. Do not resume clay bar in your paint because check this out. You get these fine rocks, you have these fine debris that land onto the clay bar, which could potentially scratch the paint. This clay bar, like I said, it's like a piece of gum. It's very sticky, so it's going to pull off that grime. But if you drop it on the floor, it's also going to pick up whatever's on there. The fine debris, the rocks, the pieces of grass, psh, you know, hell, maybe you might pick up a gnat while you're down there, but you don't want to use this. What you want to do is get this, toss it out, and you want to grab yourself a brand new piece of clay bar. Like I mentioned before, you want to grab your clay bar chunks at a time. You don't want to grab the whole thing because believe me, if I had the whole clay bar in my hand, I would be pretty upset that I dropped that whole chunk and I had to throw that whole chunk away. So that's, a that's why I still have some clay bar here in my packet because if that happened to me, I can just go ahead and grab a brand new piece and continue with the rest of the vehicle. All right guys, so now that we finished this part of the car, we're going to go ahead and continue doing the rest of the vehicle on a different day. And we're going to go ahead and proceed to our next vehicle, which is our medium clay bar. And we'll show you guys a perfect example of what a level of media contamination looks like. All right, guys. So we're back with our next car. And one thing I do want to reiterate real quick is we are outdoors. I know at the beginning of the video, I told you guys to do this indoors, but it is a gloomy day. And we're only doing a section of this hood at a time just to show you guys the level of contamination. So that leads us on to our next clay bar, which is our medium grade clay bar which like i said pulls off medium levels of contamination so for those heavier contamination levels you can actually see it on these white cars you'll see like little yellow brown specks on the paint which on this white paint looks very nasty because you have all these tiny little specks that look brown they look yellow it kind of looks like you have a bunch of little bird poop stains on your hood when in reality it's just that industrial fallout that bonds to the paint and can't easily just be washed you know with simple car wash you actually have to use a medium grade clay bar to go ahead and pull off that level of contamination i mean if you don't believe me check this out just hear this sounds very bad uh, you can see very on a microscopic level that you have all the little specks and like I said, it just doesn't look good. And on this white car, they're extremely noticeable because it is white and what is there to look if it's not just white, you know? So I'm gonna go ahead and pretty much use a clay bar and the lubricant just as the same way as I use it on the Supra and the 4Runner. You're gonna go ahead and spray a nice even coat onto the surface. Do a nice little two by two section. Spray your clay bar. And like I said, when you're doing this, I don't know if it catches it on camera, but it sounds pretty raspy when you first do it. But as you keep going, check this out. It just gets smoother and you don't necessarily hear that rough feel anymore. And you want to keep on doing this until the surface is smooth. Another thing that you want to pay attention to is since, like I said, it is a white car, you'll see all these tiny little brown and yellow specks into the paint. So if those specks are still in the paint, even after the paint feels smooth, keep attacking that area, keep hitting it with your clay bar so that you knock off that contamination because that is a contaminant that can be pulled off with your clay bar. So keep using the clay bar until that's fully knocked off and then you can move on into the next section of your vehicle. All right guys, so as I'm getting prepared to wrap up this panel, I'm gonna go ahead and pick up my clay bar. Check this out. So I'm not sure if it catches it on camera, but the clay bar, you'll have some patches of brown. You know, I'll show you guys, I'll flip this clay bar around. You see this right here? This is your clay bar then. This is how it was before we started clay bar on the surface. So you see the gray clay bar, it's a lot lighter as compared to this right here. You have more of a brown yellowish film that looks very nasty. And that's all the contamination that you're pulling off your clay bar. So 
When your clay bar gets to this certain point, what I like to do and what I recommend doing is re-kneading your clay bar. So what I mean by that is you want to go ahead and fold it inwards, outwards, however you want to do it. I usually kind of ball it up into like a little ball first and then I knead it out into a fresh patty. And just like that, I got myself a brand new surface of clay bar to work with. And you wanna keep on doing that until the point where your clay bar cannot be re-kneaded to a fresh surface. So I'll show you guys a little example here. This was a tiny little piece. So you'll see, since I did re-knead it, there's still the backside, which is, has a um, dirt and contamination that's still in the clay bar. You don't wanna use this. So if I were to go ahead and re-knead it and that came out, I would re-knead it again until I had like a nice fresh surface like so. If I keep re-kneading it and it keeps on getting to that point where it's just like that dirt showing up, you see that fine layer of dirt and grime and contamination that's on the clay bar. Continue to re-knead your clay bar until you can go ahead and re-knead it to a fresh surface. If the clay bar cannot be re-kneaded into a fresh surface, toss this piece out and get yourself a brand new piece. And like I said, that way you don't waste your clay bar by using the entire thing at, the, at once. And so if you drop it, you know, you don't have to throw it out. So use your clay bar at pieces at a time. This is my best recommendation to you guys so that you guys don't waste your clay bar and you guys don't have to go out and buy a different one. All right guys, so we just finished up with the Forerunner and the Nissan. We're gonna go ahead and head over to our last car to go over our heavy clay bar. And trust me, you guys are in for a treat for this one. All right guys, we're here at our final stop and we're gonna go ahead and show you guys a level of rough and heavy contamination. So if you go ahead and check this paint out, check out this Scion XB. See all that dust? I'm gonna go ahead and wipe it right off. Check it out. It's not dust, guys. That's contamination. That's industrial fallout. That's pretty much the worst of the worst of the worst that you can ever experience. So that right there, you definitely want to go with the heavy clay bar. I mean, just if, if, it, if you can't see it for yourself, just hear it. Check this out. No smoothness whatsoever. Nothing at all. So with this right here, you wanna use a heavy clay bar because a heavy clay bar is extremely sticky and it's gonna pull off the super embedded grime and contamination that's on the paint. So like I said, on white colors, you see it especially because you have all those little yellow brown specks. And if your paint looks anything like this, like I said, heavy clay bar, don't even bother with the light clay bar, go straight to heavy and go ahead and remove that contamination from your paint. So same process as with all the other cars that we've done today spray your clay lubricant and seriously with this be ample with it be generous with the spray do not skimp out do not spray one spray and try to do that because you're not going to get far with this clay lubricant be generous with it i give it about five sprays and i also spray my clay bar and check this out once i start hitting it you'll see right away it starts erasing all those little yellow brown specks around the paint check, check out the clay lubricant it's not even blue anymore it turned brown it's yellow you know, it's disgusting. If this is on your paint, definitely need a heavy clay bar in your life. Like I said, check this out. I'm just pretty much erasing this grime from the surface with no problem. Left and right, up and down. And one thing I do want to mention is, like I said, we do have different grades of clay bar. It's not because they're all the same thing. It's because they all have a purpose. So like I said, this heavy clay bar helped me pull off this grime easily. If I were to use the light clay bar on this, I wouldn't really get very far because it's too smooth to pull off this level of contamination. If I did use a light clay bar, I'd probably be here all day and odds are I'd probably use up the whole clay bar in order to just do this, you know, one hood of the car. So now that I've done an area, I'm gonna go ahead and wipe it off. Dude, check that out. You actually see the white in the paint again. You don't see this polka dot leopard print kind of paint anymore. You actually have that nice bright white color and you're ready to go ahead and prep for any kind of paint correction, applying any waxes so that you can get your ride looking to once what it was before. So not only do you clean the paint, but you also restore that full clarity. I mean, check it out. You see the bright white, you can actually see the reflection on the white versus the yellow, the brown, the rust spots that are on the paint. You don't even see any type of shine or any type of reflection through that. So if you wanna go ahead and make your paint shine the best, make sure you clay bar the paint and get it as glass smooth and contaminant free as possible to get those high shine results. Like I said, if you can't see those results, you can also feel them. I mean, check it out. If I rub my hand right here, 
silence. If I go over here, the roughest feeling in the world right there. I'm not gonna go back over here because I don't wanna contaminate it and scratch up the surface because like I said, this stuff that's on your paint can be a factor for scratching your paint. So if you don't know what a clay bar is or if you've never done a clay bar before, you know, if you're just wiping down your paint, odds are if you're using like a detail spray or if you're trying to wax your paint, it's not gonna bond or it's not gonna do you much good because those waxes, those sealants, those glazes, those ceramic coatings, whatever you wanna do, it's not gonna to bond to the pores of the paint because they're all clogged up with all this grime contamination. It's not gonna work out for you, you're not gonna get the results that you want, and it's gonna be a complete, utterly waste of your time. So clay bar your paint, that's the first step in every detailing process, no matter what you wanna do, even if you just wanna wax your car, clay your paint so that you get the best result. All right guys, so now we're done. We've decontaminated the surfaces. We showed you guys how to do it, how to use your clay bar and what to use with it. I've explained to you guys the different grades of clay. Like I said, one clay bar is not gonna do it all. You know, you have your light clay bar, your OG, you have your medium, you have your heavy, depending on the level of contamination. You know, I hope this video has helped you kind of understand what contamination looks like, sounds like, and feels like. So if you have any questions, like I said, refer to your clay bars, use your best judgment, reach out to us on our social media. If you have any kind of pictures, videos, like I said, reach out to us, we're here to help you out. If you guys like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, make sure to subscribe to our channel and turn on post notifications so that you are aware and notified whenever we post up a brand new video. My name is Joey, this is Chemical Guys Detail Garage, and we'll see you guys next time.